So we'll begin today with our fourth and final day of uh, uh, Vivekji's um, workshop. We've already made six major destinations on this journey and uh, we'll complete the last uh, two today. So thank you, Vivekji. Thank you, Satishji. We'll uh, invest some minutes in informal time right now. And I'm just checking with Satishji to make sure that everyone is muted, please for their own protection. Who knows what they're saying about me or the other, other, other people here. <laughs> we know how many politicians have been burned by an, an open mic. <laughs> what was the first destination that Sadishji is referring to? Please share in the chat, everyone. The first, our first practice. This is a workshop. What are we going to work with? Good. And our fifth, what was number five? Six. Good, good. Three. Two. Four. Good. Remember that Indian line I was telling you about? That's how we're gonna practice too, correct? <laughs> in random order. <clears throat> I have a class, class at nine o'clock, so I'm kind of tending to some formalities right now. This workshop has been special because I've been able to think so much about Bhagavatam and Ramayana and seeing all of you after a long time. By a show of hands, how many of you are living in Pittsburgh right now? Mm-hmm. We have more people not from Pittsburgh right now. <laughs> and uh, our family, Sheila and Vyasa and Trika, we're obviously happy to see all of you after a long time too. And you may not have seen, but Vyasa put a uh, gunguru on himself when the bhajans were going on. So he was dancing around and he, he likes to dance and Trika also. What has also been special is hearing Shankarji and, and Rupa and, and Ashaji too. The Nama Sankirtan right now, they started with Hare Rama. If you search Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, it may be listed as Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, but when the audio is played, what's going to be chanted first? Hare Krishna, Hare Rama. Hare Rama comes first. This is known as a Maha Mantra. And mantras are not to be changed. So I'm appreciative of the authenticity with which the singing uh, was shared. And by everyone, I tried to rush every evening to be part of the 745 budgets. The Salaji was telling me that you should look after your kids and they're impossible. So I was like, Bhagavan, you look, you look after them. <laughs> I'm coming to listen <laughs> to the budgets. With that, we'll begin for <clears throat> Vakratunda Mahakaya Surya Koti Samaprabha Nirvignam Kurume Deva Sarva Kadyeshu Sarvada Saraswati Namastubhyam Varade Kama Rupini Vidyaram Ham Karishyami Siddhir Bhavatu Mesada Guru Brahma Guru Vishnuhu Guru Devo Maheshwaraha, Guru Deva Param Brahma, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. Hariyam, and greetings from Niagara Falls. 
In our culture, the two greatest rulers, leaders is a better word, are known to be Shri Rama, which is obvious to all of us, and Raja Prithu. This is a cultural notion. For me, one of the greatest rulers, leaders is also Raja Parikshita. The word Parikshita means the one who is ever examining, reflecting. When he became the Raja of Bharata Varsha, India, then he was examining how the land was, how the people of the land were. And he came to hear from different people that there is a sense of selfishness. There is a most selfish being that is living in the kingdom. And he is the Raja. Raja means the one with the most responsibilities. And he never escaped from that. He embraced that. So he went looking for this being, for this spirit. And as he's traveling through Bharat Varsha, this immense landscape, he comes to this area where there's this entity that's dressed in all black. One can't see who this entity is. And this entity has a rod in his hand. And he is beating a cow. And three of the cow's legs are broken. And beside that cow is a bull. And that bull is crying. And Raja Parikshita rushes over there and pushes that spirit. And before he deals with the spirit, he first comforts the cow. And when that cow is comforted, then comforts the bull. And there's a very powerful dialogue Raja Parikshita has with this bull. And he essentially asks, is this man causing you sorrow. And what does that bull respond with? The bull laughs and says, it is laughable to think that anyone can cause anyone else sorrow. It is laughable to think that anyone can cause anyone else sorrow. Now I'll layer this with some insights. Some you already know. Who is that being? Kali, the sense of selfishness. That cow is an icon of four virtues. Those virtues are Tapa, Shaucha, Daya, and Satya. Tapa, I mean, I'm Simplify these words in English. Tapa means discipline. Shaucha, purity. Daya, compassion. And satya, which means truth. The first three legs were broken. The fourth was being broken. And this we mostly know, that bull is dharma. In our culture, an icon for dharma is a bull. And what that bull is sharing with Raja Parikshita, sharing with all of us, no one can make us sad other than ourselves. And now, the epic implication of this, no one can make us happy other than ourselves. Our workshop is training to take responsibility for our lives. To take responsibility that if I don't feel natural right now, this is not automatically going to change. I have to take up efforts to feel natural, to feel my nature. Many of you studied Jivan Sutrani with me in the mornings. And in the first chapter, one of the first verses, Swami Tejo Mayananda is taught, no one can live your life. No one can live your life. 
and adding more technicalities to this. Stones, a stone would be like my pen right now. It's made from earth. Plants, I'm looking at a plant right now. Animals. <laughs> My joking sentiment is the beings that are being put to bed right now, but more <laughs> the animals that are outside right now, the squirrels, the birds, etc., And even the devas, who are these semi-gods, all of them are boga yonis, which means they cannot live intentionally. They can only live instinctively. They are designed to evolve. The stones become plants, the plants become animals, the animals become humans. Even the devas become humans. Only we are classified as yoga yonis. In our positivity, <laughs> we assume that yoga means uniting with the better, but yoga just means uniting. <laughs> it doesn't qualify the better or the worse. We can unite with the worst, correct? I can become a worse person tomorrow. So every facet of our religion, in lighter ways, in heavier ways, in poetic ways, in technical ways, is teaching us to take responsibility of what we're feeling. And our default unfortunately, has become to feel unnatural. And I'm appreciative of the organizers, of the students, that we are putting in efforts to change our default, to feel natural, to feel our nature. Some teachers in Vedanta have shared that we should follow Bhagavan Rama's life and Bhagavan Krishna's teaching. Bhagavan Rama's life is as if easier to follow, and he didn't teach as much. Bhagavan Krishna's life is much more <laughs> difficult to follow, and he taught much more. I've also learned from different Vedanta teachers, Bhagavad Gita is a script, and Ramayana is the presentation of that script, or that being played out. Now, we're not referencing Bhagavad Gita. However, the best commentary on the Bhagavad Gita, other than the Bhagavad Gita, is Srimad Bhagavatam. In fact, one has to study Srimad Bhagavatam to be able to study Bhagavad Gita. One has to study Bhagavad Gita to be able to study the Upanishads. And that's why we are beginning with our references from Bhagavatam, and then moving on to Ramayana. All of you listed out the stops in our journey. I'm going to review this because this is the last evening, the last 45 minutes of our workshop. At the end of this, you have to follow. Do you all see my background? Beside me, amazing Hanumanji that is most contemplated. Can you see, I'm looking at it, it would be to my left. I think it would be to your right, correct? What do you see? Share in the chat what you see. Krishna, Lord Krishna, Lord Krishna leading us. Mm -hmm. That is Bhagavan Krishna. A seeker had painted this for my birthday. But what's unique about this painting is we don't see Sri Krishna's face. All of us have icons of Sri Krishna in our home. You showed me yesterday, correct? I asked you to find icons. You showed me the same icons for all of the words I shared. And this is very powerful because it shows that we're all following Sri Krishna, correct? If I can see Sri Krishna's face, that means I may not be following him. But the fact that I see his back shows that I, all of us, have to follow him and are following him. So for the rest of the workshop, don't look at me. You keep looking. <laughs> keep looking back there. 
From our hut, and I'm gonna be brief about the references. From our hut, we saw how the light of the sun was covered. Covered. Our practice is appreciated. Many of us feel taken for granted and you may feel that, but I feel, I'm, I may feel that, but my observation is, if I feel taken for granted, that means I am taking for granted also, because I know what it is. The cure for taking for granted is to be grateful. Remember those two words as antonyms. Um, take granted and grateful, okay? Appreciate. From our cave, we saw that rain was mixed with mud and speed. Our practice, plan. And Bhagavan, our creator, has given us an opportunity to plan every day that is morning time. For those who are morning people, your day is much more balanced than those who are not morning people. Plan in the morning. From our hut, we observed the rains rattling the farmers and the owners with help and harm. And our practice, insulate. Many of us are seeking external validation, which is why we are rattled. I often ask people, why do you take criticism so seriously? And you all know why. Why do we take criticism so seriously? So meaning excessively. Because we take compliments so seriously, excessively. Those who are insulated from compliments, they're also insulated from criticism. They have the right relationship. If you want to be validated, be validated by those who are wise. They will never offer you destructive criticism. Destructive criticism is criticism that you cannot better. You can't grow into that criticism. Constructive criticism is criticism you can grow into. It is applicable. It is useful. So if you want to be validated, be validated by the wise because they are not there to lower you. They're there to lift you. From our cave, we saw these fireflies at night and it is distracting. For anyone who's been camping, those fireflies, they're so beautiful, but they keep you out up at night, correct? Let's just stay awake and, and look at the fireflies. Our practice is choose. Choose that which is authentic. Choose that which is deep. An awesome quote, which you all know. All that glitters is not gold. Shakespeare shared that, I believe. This is a very Indian teaching. Most of us are of Indian origin. All that glitters is not gold, okay? <laughs> I had uh, seen an image of Michael Phelps, the American athlete, and he had all of his medals on, tons of gold, some silver, some bronze. And beneath that, there were images of Indians at a wedding, and it said, we have more gold. <laughs> Isn't that what we chase? That which is flashy. That is the first half of our journey. It is, there's a taint of negativity. This is when we are searchers. A searcher wants to be happy, but doesn't know where happiness is. The second half of our journey, which we began yesterday, <clears throat> is when we evolve from being a searcher to a seeker. A seeker also wants to be happy, but knows where it is. It is not outside, it is inside. 
They've not experienced it yet, but now they know where it is. The first time I ever heard of a tile, those things that help you find your keys, your wallet, I heard about it in Pittsburgh. <laughs> because it's things some of, some of you use, <laughs> tiles. See, when you have a tile and you hear it, you've become a seeker then. <laughs> you know where it is, you just have to get it then, correct? But if you can't hear your phone ping or that thing beep, you're still a searcher. Where is it? From our hut, we saw all of these fish who were flopping around, not realizing that they're going to suffocate. And our practice utilized. I already shared that Sri Rama and Sri Krishna never wasted time. Adding depth to this, our original parent, other words are Bhagavan, creator, etc., has custom designed our life to come back to Bhagavan, to come back home. Custom designed. Whether you're a male, female, or in between, whether you're young, old, or in between, whether you're poor, rich, or in between, any combination, custom designed. So when I don't use my life, who am I disrespecting? Who am I um, sharing with that I know more than our original parent, than Bhagavan, than the creator? All of the challenges in our lives, enjoy those struggles. Utilize. From our cave, we saw other travelers in the monsoon and they realized that this is inefficient traveling during the monsoon, so they rested. For us, the word nya, the practice is direct. The word jnana, you're all going to tell me means knowledge. But the implication of jnana is when you become quieter. Now the majority of us, we have a degree. Many of you have multiple degrees. As you got your degree or degrees, did you become quieter? I feel we all became more noisy. We pay so much to become noisy. And to be quiet, this is free right now, correct? <laughs> Zoom is free. I keep referencing my life. I was paying $20,000 a year to go to business school. And then I went to the ashram for free. And that two years was more than the previous 20 years of schooling. So direct your body, direct your senses. There's a lovely teaching in Sanatana Dharma. Sharira Madhyama Kalu Dharma Sadhana. Sharira Madhyama Kalu Dharma Sadhana. The only purpose of this body is to follow Dharma. So, what should this body be doing? To only be engaged in Dharma. In Canada, our blood services, I don't know how to describe that, is called Canadian Blood Services. And they have an awesome slogan, which is it's in you to give. What a great message. Blood is in you. We always think, always think blood is for me, but blood is in us to give. That is the utilization of the body, the senses. That's the direction that I'm referring to. Everyone's clear. Are you on stop six with me? Yes? And keep remembering Sri Krishna back there. Follow, follow, follow. Okay? Our last reference from our hut. And it's sort of sad because even in Bhagavatam, soon after with the Rasa Lila, then Sri Krishna leaves Vrajabhumi. He shifts to the adult part of his life. And it's not shared in Bhagavatam, but I've heard this from different teachers. Once Sri Krishna's adopted mother, Devi Yashoda found out that Sri Krishna is not coming back to Vrajabhumi. 
she never spoke. Whenever we think of Devi Yashoda, so exuberant, correct? Dancing and milking and playing. And <coughs> when she found out from <coughs> her husband, Devananda, he had come back from Mathura. He came alone, meaning Sri Krishna didn't come with him. She just never spoke after that. And so even here, as we think about our last reference from this hut, it is sad. But remember, Puja Swami Vivekananda has taught, don't worship Sri Krishna as Sri Krishna. Worship Sri Krishna as you. Bhagavan Krishna, Bhagavan Rama are ever available. Are you ever available? The 10th skanda, the 20th adhyaya, the 43rd shloka. This is verse 43. Kam ashobata nir megham. Sharad Vimala Tarakam Satva Yuktam Yatha Chittam Shabda Brahmata Darshanam Rishi Vyasa is descri <coughs> describing what Sri Krishna sees. And what he sees is that the clouds have gone. And with the clouds gone, Vimala Tarakam one can see the stars clearly. You're all visualizing that. And these references are amazing. Remember how we began with the light of the sun and the moon being clouded. Now we're ending this reference with the light of the stars and the moon being clear. Just like Sattva Yukta. Just like the one with a sattvic or quiet mind, Shabda Brahma Darshanam, understands the teachings of the Veda. So sharing that one more time. When the clouds disappear, one can see the stars clearly. When the noise becomes quiet, one can see the meaning of the Veda clearly. Everyone's made that connection, the reference, the learning. Okay, the philosophy of this. In Advaita Vedanta, the science of oneness, the word sat means existence. Clear to everyone? Sat means existence. For us, this is too abstract. It shouldn't be, but it is too abstract. So sat expresses as satya. Satya means truth. Whenever we think of truth, we only think of that in reference to that which is verbal, that which can be validated, correct? So much of American politics is based on that. He said, she said, who sent this email, who organized this? That's still too impractical for us. So satya express, expresses as sattva. Sattva means nobility. This we can understand. This we can hold on to. Sri Krishna is trying to teach us to engage in nobility. And how will you know if you're engaged in nobility? Your mind becomes quieter. And if your mind becomes quieter, the Veda becomes your experience. Once, there was discourses going on in Sri Ramana's ashrama in Tamil Nadu. And Sri Ramana, for this particular discourse, would be sitting in the back, which he rarely did. And so some of his disciples asked, Bhagavan, he used to refer to him as Bhagavan. What are you doing in this discourse? The speaker was teaching the Upanishad. <laughs> and Sri Ramana responded saying, I wanted to know what they wrote about me. <laughs> the Upanishad is really the biography of someone like Sri Ramana, correct? 
when our mind becomes quiet, what will the Veda be? Our revelation. Not a Rishi's revelation only. It will be our revelations. And what is the entry point? Nobility. Noble actions, noble words, noble thoughts. That will lift us to the truth, will lift us to existence. Transitioning to our practice. Adding more detail to offering thoughts, words, and actions to nobility. This is what a sadhu does. The meaning of the word sadhu. Parakaryam sadnoti iti sadhu. In English, parakaryam means others' work, others' life. Para, not mine. Sadnoti means accomplishes or facilitates. Iti sadhu. In other words, <coughs> the one who dedicates their life to others, to helping them be independent. That is a sadhu. That is immersing oneself in nobility. We keep thinking that a sadhu is an external condition. You have to wear these clothes. You have to have this name. You shouldn't have this income. It is all about your mind or your intention. Our practice. This is our seventh practice. Dedicate. Dedicate your life. And there's an evolution to this. Starting with family, for most of us, that's checked off already. Community, for most of us, that's checked off too. What should a community be doing? Dedicating itself, not to itself, but to society. If I tell all of you, Vivek is dedicated to Vivek, <laughs> what is that called? Selfishness. <laughs> and this is not an indication of this center, your centers, but there are many communities or centers who only focus on their own community, their own centers. That's also selfishness, no? And what should society be doing? Serving humanity. What should humanity be doing? Serving divinity. So dedicate. Dedication is a natural practice in oneness, no? The more selfish I am, the more separate I feel than you, from you. But the more dedicated I am, that is Advaita. Everyone's resonating with this? Okay. And our final way to be natural, the second half of our journey is now we're feeling natural, but we need to feel our nature. Our mind has become quiet, so that sattva is there. We're tuning into satya. We need to tune into sat. The end of our journey, we come to Ramayana. We're in the fourth canto, Kishkinda Kanda, or Kanda. I'm in the 17th section of Chopais. And I am reading the first Chopai, the second line, and you perhaps don't know this, but of all of the references from the Ramayana, I think I said there's 42, this is Puja Guruji's favorite. So I consciously chose to finish this workshop with what is his favorite. And I learned all of this directly from him. Pule Kamala Soha Sarakesa Nirguna Brahma Saguna Bejesa Pule Kamala. The lotus is blooming. Sohasara Kaisa. And it's blooming in a lake and looks beautiful. Jaisa, which means like, Nirguna Brahma. The infinite that has no qualities. What happens? It becomes Saguna. The infinite with qualities. 
So this is the translation for you. Here is the implication. Have you all seen a lotus before? In, in, in India, that's one of our favorite references. My eyes are like lotuses. My teeth are like lotuses. My ears are like lotuses. My feet are lotuses. Everything's a lotus. <laughs> in a lake where a lotus grows, whether that's blooming or not, that lotus is still there, correct? But here, the point is that the lotus is blue. In the same way, Brahman, the infinite, is ever, ever. You can say ever present, ever potent, ever whatever. And when it blooms, this is very much a as if. When it blooms, Brahman the infinite becomes Bhagavan. The infinite becomes accessible, feelable. <laughs> When I was in school, English was my least favorite subject. That's why I studied philosophy and teach philosophy where grammar means little. <laughs> Correct, it's all about feeling. Like, just think about it. Fun, funner, correct? Why would it be more fun? Funnest. <laughs> okay, here's our philosophy. Tell me. Do you all know what a purushartha is? A purushartha is a purpose. The artha of a purusha. What is the purpose of ours? How many purusharthas are in our shastas? How many? You're all going to write for it. You already know that. I also already know that, but see, now we're getting some guesses. <laughs> there are actually five. The four that we traditionally, technically come across are Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. In English, Dharma means position, Artha means possession, Kama means pleasure, Moksha means peace. In Bhagavatam and Ramayana, the fifth Purushartha is indicated. In Sanskrit, that is Bhakti. Bhakti. In English, presence. Presence. This is why, this is the end of our journey. This is why Swami Tejo Mayananda feels that this is his favorite is because it aligns with the fifth and final purpose of life, which is bhakti. Earlier in the Ramayana, and Swami Tej Ramayana actually taught this in, in Pittsburgh. This is from the Rama Gita. Sri Lakshmana asks his brother, Sri Rama, what is bhakti? And Sri Rama responds by saying, depending. Depending is bhakti. We translate bhakti as devotion, but he translates it as depending. But depending on who? Depending on Bhagavan. Or the language I'm using, depending on his presence, her presence. Transitioning to our practice. In Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna never tells Prince Arjuna what to do and what not to do. At the same time, Sri Krishna very subtly and powerfully teaches. And I'll give you the references first. In chapter six, this is one of the most popular verses. Sri Krishna says, lift yourself by yourself. Fine. Now we fast forward to chapter 11. After Sri Krishna shows Prince Arjuna his Vishwarupa, then he tells Prince Arjuna, whether you pick up your bow and arrow or not, all of these people are dead. Yes, many of you know this reference. Then what does he share right? One of his last teachings, <laughs> Sarva Dharma Parityaga. <laughs> you should only 
depend on me, isn't it? And the point being is, you think there is free will, but there is only God's will. See how that message changes from chapter 6 to chapter 11 to chapter 18. Many of you, your mind is blown right now. Don't worry, we're only on chapter 3. <laughs> you will understand and appreciate this more when we get to chapter 18. And so our practice is surrender. Surrender. It is one matter to be dedicated to what you are, but that has to be complemented by surrendering what you are not. Surrender is a form of unlearning. I've shared with all of you before, those who are zero to 40, why do you come to such workshops? Sorry. Yes, zero to 40, to learn. And those who are over 40, why do you come to such workshops? To unlearn, no? What's harder, learning or unlearning? It is much harder to unlearn, which is why this is the completion of our journey, surrender. Surrender, this sense of ever being away from your nature, ever feeling unnatural, ever feeling insecure. The last thought I shared with you in 2018, when we were studying Atma Shataka, I had shared, Namuktihi, there is no freedom. Why? Nabanda. There is no bondage. That's surrender. When I surrender the idea that I could ever be away from my nature, this is when I rediscover <coughs> my nature. Oh. Oof, oof, oof. No, no, you know. I was supposed to stop speaking 11 minutes ago, but I have a problem. <laughs> I have to listen to my kids, listen to my lovely spouse. See, if I just said, listen to my spouse, you would all feel like, Vivek, you so mean. That's why I qualified it by saying lovely spouse. <laughs> all morning, all day. So evening is my time and I, this is my therapy. <laughs> I just keep talking and talking. I have another class at nine o'clock. I have another meeting at 10 o'clock. <laughs> what I wanted to do with all of you, and this is still possible because I'm sure there's a recording of it. <clears throat> I wanted to facilitate guided imagery for all of you. I wanted all of us to be with Shri Krishna. I wanted us to be in that hut, to really feel that. In Chinmay Mission Niagara's YouTube channel, I've been teaching Bhagavatam for almost three years now. And many times I've led this guided imagery. I just don't know which discourse it's in. So you have to listen to all 92 hours <laughs> to find it. But I have done it. Many of you listen to that. Yes, by a show of hands. Do you all remember when I guided? Good. So this is what I wanted to do for you. But I've run out of time. So I'm going to start debriefing and then our organizers will take over. How many of you tried your <coughs> RAD? Tell me, share in the chat the RAD, the learnings you documented from nature yesterday. You'd have two. Share in the chat. Yes, be sacrificing like a banana tree. You have a banana tree? Wow, very good. Be patient, like earth who bears all. Mm -hmm. That even in darkness, there is light. There is external light, but there's internal light because we know that darkness, yes? Consistency like the sun, yes. Um, Vyasa keeps asking me, how come it's getting darker as the days are getting darker? And I, I'm trying to share that we're spinning away from the sun and he sort of gets it. But my point is we're spinning. The sun is not spinning. 
and trees, they survive, they thrive. The sequoia trees in California, some of them are 2,000 years old. They're, we pray, will survive. These are lovely learnings. Mine is, yesterday was very foggy in Niagara Falls, almost like the first reference. What I appreciated is that the fog made me um, forget about distinctions. When it's very foggy, everything blends together, correct? You don't see people's skin color as much. You don't see big houses and small houses. That's the unlearning. See, fog is good in that sense. It helps you to, to unlearn. Here is your ray, your reflection adventure of the year. Until we meet again. It could be a year, it could be years. From now until the time you die, and that's not going to be after this workshop, okay? My thread is over from yesterday. <laughs> you have to engage in environmental seva. I know all of us are engaged in seva, but your seva now has to be directed. Some aspect of your seva has to be directed towards the environment. You have heard the apparent rajas of the world talk about this in New York. I think they're in New York. So um, we have to be praja. We have to follow. Think about how Sri Rama and Sri Krishna loved and lived in nature. And I'm encouraging all of you, you're part of many centers, within your centers to have a environmental seva sangha. We all do satsang. There should also be a seva sangha, where everyone keeps on communing about how we can help the environment more. Okay, that's your reflection adventure of the year. If we see each other in a year, I'm going to ask you, what did you do? What are you doing? How is this going to grow? If you are confused about all of this, if you eat meat, become a vegetarian. If you're a vegetarian, try to limit your animal product consumption, eggs, dairy. Ideally, we should all be vegans, ideally. Even the South Indians, okay? You're all thinking in your mind, but we never grew up like that. How are we gonna survive? This planet won't survive if we keep consuming dairy. In terms of announcements, I had shared thoughts on our Chinmay University and I saw significant um, offerings to different Pittsburgh ambassadors, etc., which I'm appreciative of. I had shared thoughts on meaningful mornings, as I told you, to ever be able to study the Upanishad, and we all want to, you first have to study Bhagavad Gita. Then I shared my, yesterday, I shared my appreciation for Shankarji and Sumanji, for being who they are, and really living a lot of these practices, like dedicate. And now I continue with my appreciation to all of you for being part of this workshop. It's very special. Bhakti is the final pursuit in life, and I really sense that the last four evenings. And my specific appreciation for Chidmai Mission Pittsburgh's steering committee, and the president is Satish Ji, and the majority of the board has been part of every discourse, which is great because you're not just engaged in seva, but you're also engaged in satsanga and sadhana. And in terms of a committee, uh, Visalaji, I believe, is the yagna coordinator. And we've been planning this, I think, for years. <laughs> and finally, we were able to facilitate this. So again, not just seva, but she's here and emailing me multiple times a day also. <laughs> so not just seva, but satsanga and, and sadhana, and I've already expressed my appreciation for all of the bhajans. I have zero talent in terms of external singing. <laughs> you all know that. <laughs> and that's why I have more of appreciation of your external singing. Haryom, and now our organizers can continue. Hari Om Vivekji, uh, thank you so much. Um, 
we uh, are going to ask Sumanji to give a formal uh, vote of thanks uh, for Vivekji's uh, beautiful uh, workshop. I just wanted to share with everyone, though, a few, um, you know, uh, pictures from uh, the previous years uh, where Vivekji has been with us. And let me uh, share my screen. Sorry, I got to share the correct screen. Here we go. I think I'm sharing it now. Uh, and then I'll hand over the uh, uh, the baton to uh, uh, Sumanji. Um, so of course we want to give our heartfelt thanks, and I don't want to steal any thunder for Sumanji. Uh, but obviously uh, this uh, workshop has been just an awesome opportunity for all of us. Um, but I wanted to share with you some pictures that you know Vivekji. Um, has been uh, a real imp uh, critical part of Jinmai Mission Pittsburgh uh, for many years, dating back to 2012, 2013. Uh, he's been involved in many functions that we've done. You can see some of them here, some of our graduation functions, some of our other important activities uh, that we've done uh, is for those several years, just an integral part of everything that we did, really. I think this uh, is the South Hills inauguration. Yeah, this yeah. one here is actually when the South Hills Center opened. Yeah. And Truthfully, uh, the South Hill Center uh, would not have opened at all had it not been uh, for uh, Vivekji's involvement. Uh, not only urging us to open it, but also really bringing in many of the families in, in that area uh, through his direct involvement with them. Um, and here we have some pictures of Vivekji involved in various activities at um, Sanjeevani. You can see so the uh, top corner, I think, is when Guruji came uh, for Ramagita and he was giving a discourse at Sanjeevani. So that's the one. So. And you can see here how young these children look. Many of you know <laughs> these children look are, are much older than us. This is quite a while ago. Uh, these look how, uh, and now also be uh, cognizant of Vivekji's hairstyle throughout <laughs> these. It, it's always a big surprise as to how his hairstyle evolves from one visit to another. Uh, Here's another uh, a picture of uh, Vivekji. And of course, uh, we was so thrilled to have uh, Sheila come uh, to, uh, many times uh, with uh, Vivekji uh, to his visits to Pittsburgh. In the top corner, there is uh, Shada Aunty with uh, when Hanuman Chalisatan at the, our new center, Kailash, uh, when it was like just a barn at the time. So at that time, we called it Kailash, but now it's Amarnath. Yeah. Speaking of that, uh, the, uh, you know, Amanath is now uh, at a stage where framing is starting, you know, for a, a new 20,000 square foot uh, center. Um, it would not have even been born had it not been for uh, Vivekji's support uh, at the time we bought the land, at the time we even had the idea of doing all of this. Uh, not only just uh, so, uh, support um, in terms of words, by the way, but Vivekji raised a huge amount of money to help us start that project. Um, and in addition, uh, uh, we have some other pictures here from other uh, times that here, uh, for example, a Nirvana Shatakam talk uh, given by Vivekji South in the South Hills. And in fact, uh, these door-to-door -door satsangs, as we call them then, uh, were a big part of the growth of Chinmay Mission Pittsburgh uh, during that time. Here's uh, uh, the, the most, uh, the latest, uh, the last graduation that Vivekji uh, uh, helped us with. This is in uh, 2018, I think. Uh, and you can see Vicky never hesitated to uh, be involved in the face painting. Here we were all wearing soccer jerseys. The difference though is I couldn't really play. Vivekji could actually play <laughs> the soccer. Uh, and so that's him there. And uh, here we have uh, this, uh, uh, another uh, set of pictures from that uh, graduation. Diwali celebration. And yeah. Here we go. So we just wanted to share these uh, pictures uh, just to remind all of us and, and Vivekji as well of the many things that we've done together. Uh, so uh, Sumanji, do you mind if I hand it over to you uh, to uh, do the vote of thanks? Aryom, Sadishji, Aryom, everyone, Aryom, Vivekji. I find it's um, difficult to describe what I believe we all feel for Vivekji and the impact Vivekji has had on each of us. Um, I, I feel uh, all of us here at Chinmay Mission Pittsburgh want to express our sincere gratitude at Vivekji's feet for this workshop and all that Vivekji has and continues to do for the CMP com community. I think one thing we all appreciate about being in satsang with, with Vivekji is it's not just satsang. There are always workshops and 
we need that work. <laughs> we all like to believe we're listening, but knowing there's going to be work, we shift from uh, hearing to actively listening, right? And to readily internalize what is shared requires its application, which Viveji makes sure we do together. And you'll see, at least during our satsangs, everyone engages. Then the next day when we debrief on our rad, how many of you tried your rad? Whose hand was that? <laughs> right? Is, is Viveji speaking to me? Right? So at least there's one application together. <laughs> but I find that that touch, which is consistently part of every satsang, where we learn with Viveji is a reminder of how much Viveji, Viveji uniquely cares for each of us. And once again, our, our heartfelt gratitude to Viveji for Viveji's workshop and really inspiring each of us on our journey in life. Hari Om. Thank you so much, uh, Sumanji. Um, and I'm going to ask um, uh, Sirisha to uh, please uh, lead us uh, through the Aarti. Aarati Shri Chinnaya Sadguru Ki Divya Rupa Murati Karuna Ki Aarati Sadguru Ki Charno Me Unke Shanti Samaye Charno Gat Ki Branti Mitaye Pap tap san tap haran ki Aarati Shri Chin Maya Sad Guru ki Aarati Sad Guru ki Veda Upanishad Gita ko gaya Dharma Sanatan Phir se jagaya Shuddh Niti Preeti Shankar ki Aarati Shri Chin Maya Sad Guru ki Aarati Sad Guru ki Siddh Bari ki Tapo Bhoomi me Nitya Virajay Guru Hamare Bhakt Hridaya Anand Shrodaki Aarati Shri Chinnaya Sad Guru Ki Aarati Sad Guru Ki Aarati Sad Guru Ki Aarati Sad Guru Ki Thank you again, Vivechi, and thank you for everyone for attending. Uh, one final uh, programming note. Uh, uh, for those of you who are uh, uh, interested in offering Guru Dakshina, I've posted the link in the chat. It's also on our website. Not only that, uh, we have, uh, uh, through Vivechi's permission, recorded all of these sessions. So if you've missed anything and would like to go back uh, and refresh yourself, uh, you're welcome to do that. Uh, we'll have uh, all of the recordings posted uh, by sometime the, tonight. Thank you all and uh, good evening. Thank Hello, you again, Vivekji. Vivekji. Thank you so much. And I will come after you for another satsang soon. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, Visalaji and, and Satishji and all of you. <clears throat> Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashantu, Makasya Dukkha Bhag Bhavet. Om Shanti 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 Hi. Hari hi om <coughs> Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Hari hi om Syavara Ramachandra ki Jai. <coughs> Bhavana Sutta Hanuman ki Jai. Jai. Om Namah Parvati Pataye. Har Har Mahadev. Bolo Bhai Sab Santana ki 
जय श्री कृष्ण चंद्र भगवान की जय एंड आज के आनंद की जय